What's up, A to Z Sports Live on a Tuesday. Going to have a great show today talking about the big spending done with, by the Titans and really big spending in the AFC South in the NFL's free agency frenzy. Uh, we will get to a little Legereus Sneed talk later in the week because the new Titans cornerback officially traded from the Chiefs on Friday evening. We'll meet with the Titans media later on this morning. Uh, so we'll get to that tomorrow, but a lot of big money talk uh, today as we're going to kind of pin the Titans up against the Texans and find out who had the more impactful free agency period with these two teams landing both in the top five in the NFL's free agency spending, who had the more impactful free agency class to go along with a draft class that will come later this month. The Texans don't have a first round pick as they traded that away to the Vikings uh, this past, I guess I get in March uh, there. So the Titans can still add a lot of uh, firepower in the draft as well. So we'll go through free agency spending. We'll talk about some teams in the South divisions too, who also spent a bunch of money and all three have something in common uh, outside of spending money and figure out which of those three teams there underneath Zach has the best chance to make the playoffs in 2024. And then it is a Tuesday, which means the end of the show is for throwing shade. So start prepping that shade. If you got something, get off your chest. Then uh, get it ready for Tuesday's Throw in Shade segment to wrap up the show. Zach, welcome in. Let's get this thing rolling. Yeah, my shade has to do with a little women's hoops. I don't know if you watched last night. I was enamored. Caitlin Clark for three. Again and again bang. and again. <laughs> yeah, that was Mike Bring bang all night right there. And then uh, UConn closed things out last night versus USC. So the final four is set. Women's hoops is yep. up but i do have some shade that involves women's hoops so uh get your okay. shade ready we're gonna have a big show today on this tuesday we are broadcasting live on three different platforms including facebook youtube and twitch we've got you locked in right there we will tweet out link by link segment by segment our youtube link to our show on our twitter at a to z sports so follow us at a to z sports that's at a t o z sports on twitter we also Give our all NFL handle a follow at a uh, a t o z sports NFL. So at a to z sports NFL, you can search that on Twitter. We've got all the NFL coverage that is continuing to grow as kind of the all encompassing a to z sports brand. So help us out by following us there. If you are on YouTube, subscribe, like, and ring the bell. How does that work? Well, if you subscribe. It's easy to hit the subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, like this video. It helps the algorithm get more community members into the chat, which means more opinion, which means more discussion, which means more opportunity for you to be featured on the show and ring the bell to have live alerts once we go live in the morning and in prime time with Buck Rising Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. So uh, keep it locked there on YouTube. Facebook, what's going on? Facebookers, bottom left corner of your screen, share, share, now to public. Sharing is caring and caring is sharing. As we say on this show, share the show around. We need to pop up in your Facebook friends news feed. Got a big show on this Tuesday to be interactive and get everybody involved. So let's get this party started. Yep, let's do it officially. Welcome into A to Z Sports, powered as always by the Bet MGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham, and we are Nashville's on demand sports talk uh, network going live weekday mornings at 8 Central Time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Link to the show segment by segment on our Twitter X timeline at A to Z Sports. Also hit us up on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads for more great Titans content. Got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for us, and they help out all of you. Like Wilson County Hyundai, make them a part of your new car buying process in Lebanon or online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. The Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Farm Bureau Health Plans, get better with Farm Bureau Health Plans and get a quote at our link, fbhp.com slash A-T-O-Z. And Krebs Kubota, an elite Kubota dealer with three great locations across the mid-state in Columbia, Franklin, and Murfreesboro. They are online at krebskubota.com. So, Zach, uh, there's a lot of conversations that we've had so far this calendar year. 2024 as we're in the fourth month april 2024 about knowing the titans have had a lot of money to spend before the firing of mike Vrabel, then the hiring of brian callahan with Rand carthon as the gm getting the vp title a lot of unknowns of what's going to happen surrounding this titans franchise this offseason 
in the infamous conversation that you and I had the Monday morning of the legal tampering period uh, three weeks ago of how aggressive are the Titans going to be? I said six and a half out of 10. You said, I believe, eight out of 10. And the Titans, the narrator says, were the most aggressive team in the NFL. Not by their chinny chin chin, but by a long shot. Because the Tennessee Titans spent a total of $306 million in total contract value so far this offseason. Over $50 million more than the second place Carolina Panthers at 254 the Eagles at 247, the Falcons at 240, and the division rival Houston Texans at 235. That's just such a large gap there between the, t- the Titans and everybody else when it comes to free agency spending. This also includes contract extensions and waiver claims. It's every dollar spent, not just the guaranteed dollars, but across the board, every dollar spent, the Titans head and shoulders over everybody else in the NFL. It's something that I don't think anybody that covers the Titans who's fans of the Titans is used to seeing this team be this aggressive really in any type of fashion in this league. Well, what the Titans did, and you could actually look at their approach and say, I understand the approach is more beneficial than what we've seen in past years. Let's take the Texans and the Panthers and the Falcons. I mean, you take all three of those. Yeah. They've all had really bad years without having a direction, right? I mean, the Texans went through two years, two really bad years without a direction because of the Deshaun Watson saga, right? right? They were bad, 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 picking at the top five consistently. The Panthers did the same thing. When they traded away Christian McCaffrey, they were bad, right? Two years ago, no good. They got the first pick, then they're starting to rebuild. They were bad this year. They were so bad that... They were the number one pick that they don't have, right? So Mm -hmm. not great strategy. You don't know how that is always going to work out, but they fired Frank Reich, ownership. That's kind of where that is. The Falcons, you know, their direction was a little bit skewed. I think the Falcons fans would tell you that they always had this reservation about Arthur Smith being the guy, and they didn't have the quarterback. Desmond Ritter going back and forth with Taylor Heineke, that, I mean, that was a, a merry-go-round, a roller coaster, a seesaw, whatever you want analogy you want to put. That really wasn't great. What the Titans did was different, and I think it, it kind of benefited them. We talk about the reset, rebuild, retool graphic that we did all last season. Well, they went into right. it saying Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, DeAndre Hopkins, Kevin Byard, uh, they signed Jeffrey Simmons. Like they have their pieces. We're going to go after it. We're not going to be bad. Mike Vrabel's not going to lose. We love winners. Well, also at the same time, they drafted a quarterback as backup if the plan failed. Well, hello. The plan failed. They were awful. They were really bad. And Ryan Tannehill got hurt. Things were not what it seemed. So what happened? They actually had a backup plan knowing that all of that money was going to come off the books this year. So Mm -hmm. they still built, they weren't great. They still picked in the top 10, but there's a difference of what like the Texans and the Panthers and what we're talking about, right? That's a worst in the NFL. The Titans were never the worst in the NFL. They were close to it at times, but now you had a situation going into this off season Salary cap increases by like 30 million. They already had 70 million. They got a ton to spend. They got a really a second year GM that this is the year that he was actually going to make his move and a brand new head coach with a brand new coaching staff. They should have been aggressive. That's what I was preaching on that Monday is eight. They blew blew, blew past my eight and went to a 10. 11, maybe. I I mean, turn it up to 11, Rand. I mean, that's. And I think like what you said about Rand Carthon, this being his second year, but really his first year to go after it. Last year for Rand Carthon was a cleanup year too because he had to do a lot of work to get under the cap because they were $25, $30 million over it uh, when before free agency or when the season ended two seasons ago. And so I think that's the very impressive thing. And Bork brings up with the draft still to go, right? The draft is still to go. The Titans are still having the ability to add a lot more with the seventh overall pick, the 38th overall pick. Do they try to gain another third round pick because they were aggressive last year and traded this third round to pick away for Will Levis? 
They traded next year's third round pick away for Legereus Sneed. So look, third rounders are expendable. Future third rounders are expendable because Rand Carthon has moved it uh, both times that he's had the chance uh, to do so. So this is going to be very fascinating. So once again, I'll, I'll show the graphic uh, right here. Here's the overall graphic with big spenders in free agency and this offseason in general because this includes contract extensions and waiver claims. Because you get like the Eagles, right? The Eagles spent $247 million. That's third most in the NFL. But like $110 million of that 247 is re-signing their guard, Landon Dickerson, and re-signing their kicky, uh, or the kicker, excuse me, uh, there too. So their kicker is getting $6 million a year. So that's a lot of that Eagles 247. So the extensions go into this. So uh, when it comes to the Titans offseason, here are the notable moves. $306.4 million. The notable signings are obviously Calvin Ridley, center Lloyd Cushenberry, cornerback Cheeto Awuzie, uh, running back Tony Pollard. Talked a lot about Tony Pollard yesterday. Linebacker Kenneth Murray Jr. and defensive lineman Seb Sebastian Joseph Day. Plus the extension for traded cornerback Legereus Sneed. So here's what we want to do with this. We want to talk, talk about the Titans versus the Texans. Because the Texans are fifth in the money spent in the NFL this year at $235 million. So let's ask this question. I'll give you some information. Uh, which team, the Texans or the Titans, had the most impactful free agency period? So I just showed you the Titans offseason. Here is the Texans offseason with $235 million spent. Their notable signings are Jonathan Grenard, D lineman, another uh, pass rusher, and Daniil Hunter coming from the Vikings, Aziz Alshire coming from the Titans, Sheldon Rankins, Danico Autry also from the Titans, and linebacker Blake Cashman as well. Then they had extensions for traded running back Joe Mixon and their tight end from last year on a one-year deal with Dalton Schultz. That is the Texans' $235 million for the most part. So our question here, and we'll get to all of your comments after uh, we ask this, who had the more impactful free agency period? The Titans or the Texans? Who has the mo more impactful free agency period? Titans or Texans? But first, Zach, tell everybody about our friends at Farm Bureau Health Plans. Yeah, fbhp.com slash A to Z is where to go to get your new health plan. I did a few years ago, and I'm glad that I did. Health, dental, and vision. 200 plus locations across the state of Tennessee. If you live in Tennessee, you've got to check out Farm Bureau Health Plans of Tennessee. They're trusted not only by A to Z Sports, but also by the Tennessee Titans, the Tennessee Volunteers. They've got great partnerships and relationships all across the state with really good, reputable companies. And they help individuals and families. You just got to find your perfect plan. How that happens is you take a health assessment, they give you a quote, and you make a decision. It's up to you ultimately. It's really, it's in your hands. So Farm Bureau Health Plans of Tennessee, they're all across Tennessee. They've got agents all across Tennessee and locations all across Tennessee. Check on them. They're reliable. They've been in business over 75 years. That's FBHP, Farm Bureau Health Plans, FBHP.com slash a t o z bet mgm is how you win big with the king of sports books and we have the best uh first bet new user offer that's on the market right there you can get up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first bet misses but you have to use our bonus code a t o z sports when you sign up with the bet mgm app they are also the best at the uh promotions that they continuously hand out uh, to existing users. I just woke up this morning and had a $5 free bet for no reason. A, a bonus bet in my account. You know what I did with it? I put it on DJ Burns and the Wolfpack on Saturday because, hey, why not? A $5 bonus bet that I just got gifted. Why not put it on my arch enemy, uh, Zach Eady? And that, so that's what I decided to do this morning with BetMGM. But you can go big uh, with our bonus code, ATOZ Sports, up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you miss out on that first bet. You get another shot at it. So go big with it with ATOZ Sports. Uh, BetMGM and Game Sense remind you to play responsibly. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tennessee only. New customer offer. All promotions, subject qualifications, and other requirements. First online room money wager only. Rewards you to none of bonus bets. Bonus bets five, seven days. And for following game of sport, call Tennessee Redline 800 889 9789.
Zach, to the chat you go. We also need way more likes on the show. we got a lot of people watching right now, and not nearly enough people have hit that like button. So please, if you're watching, hit the thumbs up right there on the show on Facebook and on YouTube. So who had a more impactful free agency period, the Titans or the Texans? Zach, I'll send you the chat. What's Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch saying on this one? Well, I think Danny starts us off and says, this is hard to grade. The Texans had a world-class draft class last year that left them with less needs. That is true. But what they spent and where they spent, I think impactful to what they had, right? In a vacuum, right? This is Yeah, we're talking about this in a vacuum as well. They drafted their quarterback. They drafted their defensive leader at the top of last year's draft, which I think surprised a lot of people. The rumors were swirling that the Titans wanted to trade up with the Cardinals to get C.J. Stroud. You know, you look back, hindsight's twenty twenty. You You live who you live with now. But what we're asking is who had a more impactful free agency this year. We showed you the graphic of all the signings. We'll show you that again. But Ahmad says Texans. Shady says Titans. Clay, Clayton says Texans. Uh, top tier says Titans. Uh, Texans say, or Jason says Texans defense is nasty. Mario is going with the Titans. Brandon's going with the Texans. This is a very intriguing question because we're asking, let's just call it what it is, a Titans audience who had a, but we're getting some honest answers. Like uh, Molly says uh, Texans right there. Ryan says Titans. John says Titans, and I'm sure we're going to have plenty of Titans. Titans, Mm -hmm. Kyle says the Texans. They targeted a few positions they wanted to improve around Stroud and went hard after them, and they absolutely did uh, in a plethora of different areas and those positions. Titan Up says Titans. Maven says Titans. Katie says Titans. Sean Gill says Texans got more bang for their buck, in his opinion. Billy Jones goes with the Titans. Uh, Jason says Titans, the impact carries more weight. Got a couple of Titans coming in from Deborah and Ryan, but Ryan says the Titans needed it more. Hello, ladies is on the fence uh, and says that a tie. That's not how this game works. Jake says the Texans, they're further along in the process and they are because of their quarterback's experience and success going to the playoffs and winning the AFC South. Jaron says the Titans. Sports fan says the Titans, but Texans are still the better team, dot, 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 for now. Texans had quantity. Titans had quality. So yeah. Buck's burner account is kind of going opposite from a previous comment. Johnny says the Texans because the Titans aren't in a position to win now, and the Texans are. Uh, let's see. You've got Texans. Joe Mixon is an upgrade. Hunter with Will Anderson. Uh, you know, there's... There's a ton of what the Texans did that bolstered their lineup. I think that Mm -hmm. if you had one word to put together for the Texans, they bolstered what they already had. But Austin, the turnover in the NFL is real. They are on average is four new playoff teams every single year. Now they added a playoff team, you know, with that seventh slot a couple of years ago, but four new playoff teams coming in, AFC, NFC combined. You also that was my have next question. Of, is that each conference or is that four new? Out of, no, no, out no. Of it's, it's all told. All told. Yeah, yeah. So there's consistency. Yeah, there's not yeah. eight new playoff teams each year. There's four. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I do think that you've got a question, and we've seen this time and time again, whether it's due to injury, poor play, or circumstance, or schedule. Sophomore slumps, right? I mean, an incredible rookie season for C.J. Stroud. And you could throw that in for Will Levis. Not as incredible. I mean, incredible, I think you would use for C.J. Stroud. I think building blocks for Will Levis. But these second-year guys, once these D coordinators get tape on your ass, things start to struggle, right? Things start to get more difficult unless you can – unless you have that dog in you and at the quarterback position and you rise above. Looking at the Texans and the Titans, Austin, who do you think had a more impactful free agency this past year? All right, so I'm going to go back through the graphics. The Texans offseason, they signed, look, I mean, these names are defense, defense, defense. All their outside signings that we've made notable. There are more than just these six players for the Texans, but Grenard, Daniil Hunter, pass rushers. Al Shire, 
is we know we saw him play for the Titans. He's a tackle machine uh, this past year, and he's re- reunited with D'Amico Ryans. Sheldon Rankins and Nico Autry just linchpins in your defensive line and another linebacker in Blake Cashman. Then the offense, right? Joe Mixon and Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz had the familiarity with, with uh, Stroud last year. Joe Mixon's a do-it-all uh, running back uh, there for C.J. Stroud, too. Versus the Titans, it was opposite, right? It was a uh, offense, 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 and you splashed a little bit of defense in there, too, because the Titans was a more balanced uh, additions class than the Texans. He's got firepower on offense with Ridley and Cushenberry and Pollard. And then you've got the two big ones on the defensive side in Legereus Sneed and Chidobi Awuzie. And so my answer, Zach, in a vacuum for this question of who had the more impactful free agency is the Tennessee Titans because they had more to, they had more opportunity, right? They had slightly more money to spend than the Texans, and they spent a lot more money. They were more aggressive during the month of March than anybody else. Therefore, it was more impactful to what I think the Titans were going to be versus what the Texans are going to be. The Texans were more look, they spent a lot of money. There, there's also a couple other players in there that they spent on that are nice players and, and that will help. But I think the Titans are more impactful because I think their ground to cover was greater. And so if the Titans, you know, going into free agency was a win loss record of like, you know, four and 13 or maybe a a five and 12 year, I think now you're looking at more wins for the Titans than you previously expected because they're putting more behind Will Levis, knowing that they still have two high draft picks at seven and 38 to add to it, where the Texans don't have a single draft pick before the Titans have two draft picks because of the trades they've made in the draft the last couple of years. And so I think my answer is so This is simple. free agency. This is Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Like, so the, 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 more impact, not included. the more impactful free agency is the Tennessee Titans still, though, because of what all they added around their player and how and around their quarterback in Will Levis, because the Texans really didn't do as much around C.J. Stroud. They did it on the defense. The, the Titans added for Will Levis and for their defense, and they've got two of the top 15 paid cornerbacks in the NFL in Cheeto and Sneed. And that was, it, it, you know, it's pick your poison, offensive line or secondary. One of those was going to get the Titans beat, and we saw occasions of both things happening and losing games last season. And so they put a lot into the offensive line at center. They put a lot into the secondary with the two cornerbacks. And then you throw in Calvin Ridley over top. I think it's it's the Titans for a more impactful march. So I think that the Texans were very were more direct. And I think that's why. And you sit there and you say, yeah, they're the Titans were direct. I know what I'm getting with the Texans more so than the Titans. And I think that edges. I think it's a really good question. That's why we had. A yeah. multitude of answers. Texans, Titans, Texans, Titans, right? And this Back is a Titans forth. chat, right? I saw somebody like, oh, this is a Titans show. Of course, it's going to be Titans heavy. No, it really wasn't that slanted. Yeah, and I think they went through, and I think one big thing, well, I'll say two big things mattered with the Texans last year. Okay. The injury to Tank Dell after mm-hmm. what all he achieved prior to that injury and the emergence of Nico Collins. So what did they do? The the offensive pizzas is they got their Dalton Schultz back that they and I had Dalton Schultz on my fantasy team, so I know how he played. He was up and down at times, but he was a reliable resource for a young quarterback. Joe Mixon gets out of Cincinnati, who we I don't think anybody doubts Joe Mixon as a running back. Let's just say that. As a uh-huh. running back like he is going to help their running game, I think, a great deal. Their problem was defensively. And so what they did, and they went and spent a ton on that. And what is the defense? The Titans still have holes defensively, right? They still don't have sure. a safety. They still don't have a middle linebacker. And so to, to kind of how we started, I think one of the chat members said, you know, the 
the the Texans were further along. I think absolutely you could say that in just one year. It's kind of a crazy turnover because they go from like the second worst team to now all of a sudden they're a playoff team and they're building something to compete. I think that they already had their offensive pieces. They're all of the complementary pieces that they put around their quarterback were tremendously impactful. Yeah, I'm not saying that the previous. Titans were not, but I think yeah. the Texans edged them out because they had those two staples of Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Yeah, but that's that not you got. I think you're getting caught up in the sexy flash of what the Titans did, and it is. No. It is. It is nice. We love it, right? Wow. Oh my gosh. You know the the Tony Pollard move to start. And then now coming in and sweeping up Calvin Ridley from an AFC South team that was potentially going to re-sign him in Calvin Ridley. I think we get distracted with all that, but Nico and Tank, they got something there. Yeah, they do, but that's not a part of this conversation, though. And, but like, you I, know, it involves it, of it, the direction of what they did in free agency. I, I, I do yes, but it's not again. This is it, it is a hard conversation to have because um NB says. Was that the question, Austin? Wasn't it which team had the more impactful for agency, not who built around their quarterback more? But, you know, those things do go hand in hand. But I well, think – What but also I think, goes hand in hand is is at the bottom. Are You, you look at all of the defense. These are big-time players. They no also no came in and took – what do we think about Aziz? What do you what did in the one year that Titans fans saw Aziz Alshire? How how did we feel about him? I'm asking. I liked him. I liked him a lot. He's a good leader in the locker room. He was a, a responsible person with the green dot on his helmet to help manage the defense. He was available all the time, if not you know every snap that he needed to be. And look, he he was an up. He, he is a replaceable level linebacker. He is not a superstar. Who is he playing player. next to now? Uh, Blake Cashman, I, or well, he's surrounded by this entire a group, better defense, yes. a much better defense, right? What did you think about Danico Autry, Austin? Oh, he's a stud, but he's also turning 34 years old, coming off his best. You would have loved to have Danico Autry back. Be quiet. The, you know that well, I that, know that and the whole the whole place knows that. Hey, Danico, hey, Autry hey, hold on, hold on. I, I know, I know, they I know you guys. Dude, oh, dude, Zach, I know you You only do like 30, 35% of the shows here. We've had several shows that I've talked about what I thought about the Nico Autry. And I'd said, I'm, I, I did a plan of eight signings the Titans should make. And the Nico Autry was not one of those eight signings. Like I was fine with letting him go. I thought it was the right time based on his career, where he's at, what he's going to cost. And Nico got a lot of money. He got a two-year deal you for a lot fine more money. with him leaving. I never yes. said you – you could be fine just, with him leaving, but you also would have loved to have him back because he's better than the piece that I you're, think – You're saying that without having the conversations with me pri previously. I was not loving – I was not trying to get Danico back. I actually said, no, it's the right time to let him walk. If the Titans were – the Titans are changing. They are in a switch – flip of the switch, right? It is the like, – if you were contending – then Danico, yes, bring him back for one year, two years, whatever it takes. But that's what not where the they're Texans at. do. The Texans yeah, they, are contending. No, that's it's why a I good say signing for them. That's the free agent. But that's why I'm that that you're. These are the points that I'm making on why I think the Texans edge out impact because they took two of your guys. They added also stellar pieces on top of that in Joe Mixon. They re-signed Schultz. They they got uh, Daniel Hunter which is an edge rusher, which you, know, you could say the Titans needed probably another edge rusher uh, to a degree. And they already had the pieces offensively, and they added to that in Schultz and Mixon. I just think you take the sexiness away. I think the impact, which is the question, yep. the impact of the Texans signing edges out the Titans' sexiness. If you talk about... Who had a sexier offseason? I think the Titans are up on the pole sliding down. But the Texans' okay. impact had it better. Uh, I mean, I disagree. I think the Titans had a more impactful uh, free agency. We'll get to some comments that I favorited uh, that I wanted to get to from you guys. We'll continue to have this uh, conversation. But first, I want to tell everybody about the Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Whenever an injury happens in life, when it comes to yourself, life injury, maybe you get hurt playing some rec sports, maybe it's just getting older and, you know, 
things break down <laughs> as that happens, or your son or daughter, hopefully don't, they don't get hurt playing youth sports, but that happens as well. And the bone and joint Institute can be your resource to get you back uh, on the road to recovery uh, with all the resources they have, the dozen plus experts they have at their Franklin facility. that can do it all with the imaging clinics, testing, surgery center, rehab facility. That's all state of the art right off of I-65 and Hi- highway 96 in Franklin, Tennessee. They've also got, Clinics uh, scattered across Williamson County to go along as well. And check them out and book an appointment today. It's super easy. Boneandjointtn.org. It is eSports powered by BetMGM. Pick up that phone if you're already on your phone after this show. Make sure you get onto your app store, Apple or Android. Go to BetMGM, type in BetMGM, and sign up. New users use that bonus code ATOZ Sports. That's ATOZ Sports, all one word, no spaces. When it prompts you for that bonus code, they are the king of the sports book. You got great, great sports coming down the turnpike this week and into the weekend. Download the BetMGM app today. Use that bonus code ATOZ Sports. All right. So we're asking the question who had a more impactful free agency period between the Titans or the Texans? I'll go through it. Uh, the graphics that we have is the NFL total spend right here. The Titans head and shoulders above everybody else with the most money spent in free agency, contract extensions, waiver claims, the whole kit and caboodle. There are the Titans at 306 million. And that 306 million goes to the notable names of Calvin Ridley, Lloyd Cushenberry, Cheeto Awuzi, a running back, Tony Pollard, linebacker, Kenneth Murray Jr. And defensive lineman, Sebastian Joseph Day and the contract extension post trade of Legereus Need, who we'll hear from later today for his intro presser with the Titans. The Texans uh, were right there in that top five graphic with $235 million. Notable names, mostly on the defense, Jonathan Grenard, Daniel Hunter, Aziz Alshire, former Titan, Danico Autry, former Titan, Sheldon Rankin, Rankins, and then Blake Cashman to go along with the traded running back for Joe Mixon and re-signing tight end Dalton Schultz after his one-year deal with the Texans last season. Again, I think it's the, the Titans had a more impactful uh, free agency period because they had more ground to gain. They spent more money. They spent like $80, $70 million more than the Texans. Therefore, they had more shots to be more impactful. Uh, so I, I want to get to go through some other comments. Titans Kyle said they, as in the Texans, I believe, had two 1,000-yard receivers. They really didn't need to add to that room. They also have a good offensive line. They re-signed their tight end and upgraded the running game. That's help for Stroud. No doubt about that, right? But we like it's you can't you have to kind of separate this, right? Because if you're talking about the players they added in the month of March during free agency signings, extensions, or trades, the Titans, as Andre said, the Titans filled gaping holes where the Texans reinforced the roster. Well, I don't know. See, I disagree with that. I say it is easier to be more precise in your thinking if you got to fix a whole business. You're not going to be able to fix it in one year, right? But if you have have a one year to fix it, and then you're now on year two, you can make more impactful decisions to your business. Uh, sure. And I think that's what the tight the Texans did essentially more so because the the Titans were sitting around and they had a slab of concrete, right? They started from kind of ground zero, and the Texans could make more impactful decisions this year, and I think they did that. Yeah, um, I mean, I agree with Andre. I mean, filling gaping holes is it, you're able to elevate yourself a little bit because you've got the number one center available, the number one wide receiver available, the number one corner who was available who had an expiring contract. He was franchise tagged, then he was traded for, and you extended him, and Legere Sneed. I mean, we talk about this all the time, Zach. In, like, in the growing age of the NFL, I used to have four key positions, right? That's changed a little bit. It used to be quarterback, left tackle, then edge rusher and corner. Now I think you have to add the wide receiver to that four to make it five. And your boy, Chris Sims, your buddy has always talked about how important the center position is. And we saw the drop off at the center position from Ben Jones to Aaron Brewer and how that impacted the quarterback and the running back directly. And so I think when you get the best players available, at wide receiver, center, and at cornerback, that's a pretty big haul. And you've got to be impressed with it. Not saying you're not, but you've that is a massive impact, especially when two of those guys 
directly impact your second round quarterback who's going into year two of a four year deal. So I saw one of the comments start, and I, I I think it's a good comment. I think I just want to change one word. Okay. And Brickhouse says, "Yep, going from an F to a C, talking about the Titans, is better than a B to a B plus." as the Texans. And I, the only word that I would replace, and I think the Titans are a product of this, is going from an F to a C is easier than a B to a B plus, right? So it's not better, it's easier. We all know going from bad to good is easier than going from good to great. Yes, I said Ding. good to great, right? Drink. <laughs> but I also think, in, and I go back to like, fixing yeah. a business, if you don't have to fix as many pieces of the business, you don't have to go hire new HR. You don't got have to go hire a whole new sales team or replace the, the, the break room because it's moldy. Like if you don't have yeah. to do all that and you can concentrate on, I need to go get our new general manager. I need to go find our new product specialist that can come in here for whatever bi business it is. I think those moves can be more impactful, and I think that's why I'm going with the Texans. Like I said to begin with, I don't think it's like massive, like, oh my gosh, the yeah. Texans are so much further. And I don't think that's what you're saying, but yeah. I do think that the, the decisions made by the Texans of where they are in a franchise, which is crazy because it's been so quick. If we rewound 365 days prior, we'd be like, man, the Texans, blow. They don't have anybody. They don't have anybody. Well, they changed that very quickly. Yes. And so if, if you were to ask me, you know, I, I think the Titans and the Texans have probably had two of the best off seasons in the entire league. There's some other teams that have done really well. About. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like they spent a lot of money. They're top five in spending. There's some other teams that were very, you know, smart and selective with available money that they had. Uh, but I think the Texans and the Titans had two of the better uh, off seasons in the entire league. I did want to get to, uh, uh, Darren's comment. He says, even if it's easier, it's still more impactful. Impactful doesn't equal better. It, which is, I think both of those things are true. Easier could mean more impactful, but impactful doesn't mean better. The Texans maybe could have a better off season because of their starting point in the Titans, but the Titans be more impactful in Darren's conversation. So here's where I think the Titans have done. I think the Titans skipped a year in their rebuild with how they approach this, just like the Houston Texans skipped a year in their rebuild last year. Do you agree with that? I think both teams were down bad. The Texans were down bad for longer, but I think with what they did last off season with D'Amico Ryan's hire, the drafting of CJ Stroud, adding Will Anderson, and Tank Dell and their other 11 rookies from last year's class, plus how they were able to accelerate their winning, winning the division and winning a home playoff game. They skipped the year in the rebuild. I think the Titans are trying to do the same thing because early in free agency, there in was two a different ways. Yes. Early in free agency, like the first like day was – what are the Titans doing? Like pre Calvin Ridley signing, the Titans made uh, some moves on the Monday. The Texans did a bunch of things Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the Titans were quiet. And then they got Ridley. But during that Tuesday, Wednesday area, it was, man, the Texans are really doing this thing. Why aren't the Titans doing this thing? Well, and my thought was the Texans are a year ahead because even though Stroud and Levis were both rookies, they're a year ahead because of what they were able to do last year. The Titans are trying to get a year ahead or where they should be by skipping a year. And I think you have to tip your cap to, to Carthon and to Callahan. And, and now you got to make it happen on the field and win eight plus games. Yeah. And what we don't know, I mean, NFL fans do, but like Texans fans truly know, like they had to expend probably three years. And then they had all that pinup aggression last year in the draft. And, you know, to their credit, it worked. I mean, so far it has worked. I don't know in the long term. Both the Titans and the Texans are still trying to figure out how they were are eventually going to. What you don't want to do is you don't want to sputter out 
right? I think the Jags are in fear of sputtering out a little bit because they had their surge and then they kind of regressed a little bit. The Texans have had their surge. What are they going to do this year? The Titans, now the Titans are like the Colts, right? We're, they're they're waiting on their surge. They still don't know who they have with their quarterback. We still don't know enough about Anthony Richardson. We still don't know enough, enough, enough about Will Levis. And the easiest way to make the playoffs is how? Winning your division? Winning your division, right? So if you can concentrate and focus on the teams you play twice a year, because the, the, the NFL has set this up that way. At the end of the year, you're going to play an AFC South team no matter what. And they may be really bad or win and get in scenario, right? That we've yeah, seen yeah. quite a bit. So that's why this is so valuable. And I think that's why the NFL is so smart is the Texans and the Titans are kind of, they're, they're jabbing, right? The Jags went through this. We talk about the Jaguars. The Jags went through this three years ago, Right. I mean, with the 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 draft of their quarterback, and then the expenditure of what they was, went and heightened their and basically ro- rose the entire uh, hell the free. I just thought about this. Goal. I just thought about this. Uh, the Titans, the Jags, and the Texans. You just mentioned it. The 2022 off season, the Jags fired Urban Meyer, hired Doug Peterson. They had Trevor Lawrence going into year two. They spent a bunch of money. Christian Kirk leading the way with the most notable names there. What did they do? They were able to sneak by and win the division after the Titans crumbled. The Texans, last offseason, they fired their coach. They hired D'Amico Ryans. They got C.J. Stroud. They went big time in the draft. They got good rookies early. They won the division because the Jags crumbled. The Titans, this offseason, Fired Mike Vrabel, hired Brian Callahan. They had Will Levis going into year two. They went crazy big in free agency. Now the missing piece is put Will your they bets win the in. Division? Bet MGM Titans plus like eight hundred to win the division because it's happened the last two years in a row. And will the Texans follow suit and be the third team to crumble after being the heads-on division favorite? I don't know. I'm just saying trends are trends. And the only people that are going to bet on that on BetMGM are Titans fans. Just like last year, all of the Texans fans, the crazy Texans fans that believed in C.J. Stroud after the draft. Now, you want to wait. Well, for the Titans, you probably want to do this right before the draft because the big question, and we haven't dove, and we don't have a lot of, a lot of time at least, to back and forth. I have promised the people one day, this was when you were out last week, one day for Sam and I to go head to head because I believe in one philosophy of drafting with the seventh overall pick. Oh yeah. Sam obviously believes in another pick, but that's kind of what you're down to is how will the NFL view the Titans? If they draft a tackle versus a premier wide receiver, mm. I'm curious to see how that will change things, you know, cause you'll look around and you'll be like, wow, I mean, God, that room is crowded. You you have Traylon Burks if you draft neighbors and you have Calvin Ridley and you have DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to me. That yeah, doesn't make Who's going to play left tackle, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean Malik that doesn't make any sense. He does, does make it. He does. You have to trade away Traylon Burks. And nobody no, wants I, him. I, I think you don't have to. You just cut him after his 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 fifth year or his fourth year or whatever it is. You, you or the 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 why it makes sense to take a receiver at seven is because you've got two guys. Diop going into a contract year and he's thirty two. Ridley is going to turn thirty and going into a year where you can get out of it after the second year. And you want Will Levis to have somebody there that he's used to that he knows going into his fourth year. But that, you that, want that, that guy to. Come guns a blazing like and i don't think he'll have that opportunity with two veteran wide receivers ahead of him look i i don't disagree like i i'm, I'm i don't like that, that plan i i i think there's a world that makes a lot of sense and i'm not it's just all about who's available and that like i i'm at i right. 
sitting here saying like whoever the tight if the Titans stay at seven and they take somebody, they're going to get a damn good player, which is fantastic. A damn good player. Uh, it's just who and where, uh, which is you know so interesting that we're going to have <clears throat> over the next like twenty three days uh, before uh, this NFL draft kicks off. Before we move on, uh, a silly I one. Look, this is why we do this sh- the show, brother. I really don't like your takes on anything, buddy. Good, right? You've got your takes. I've got my takes. You can like your own takes. You can draft your wide receiver at seven. You can trade up for a uh, you, you a silly eye. You may be wanting to draft Drake May. I have no idea. But me, I want a stable left tackle. And you can hate that take or love that take. I don't feel anything about you. I, I, I think you're a good person from what I know, at least, from what you stand for. But you should have the opinions that you have. And if you disagree with me, every right. Sure. There he is. He's right there. He's laughing, 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 laughing. All good. All right, so we've gone through Titans versus Texans. How about we go back to the top five spenders in this free agency with the Titans at $306 million of total money given out uh, this year, this offseason, with the Panthers and the Falcons also in the top five right here. Those three teams were not playoff teams just last year. So our question now is which of those three teams has the best chance to make the playoffs this upcoming year? I just went through the AFC South trend, and I didn't even mean to do that. Uh, I was just off the top of the head of kind of thinking, having that light bulb go off. But which of these three teams is more likely, most likely, to make the playoffs in 2024 after missing the playoffs last season? Because you've got... The bad NFC South, the Bucks going to reset to go after it again. Uh, but we're going to go through who is most likely to make the playoffs this year, Titans, Panthers, or Falcons. Titans, Panthers, or Falcons. But first, Krebs Kubota, that is where you should turn for all of your equipment needs because they have three great locations, family-owned and operated by the Krebs family. Those locations are in Columbia, Franklin, and Murfreesboro. Krebs Kubota is also uh, an elite Kubota dealer. Elite Kubota dealer means they have the best equipment in the industry and the best warranties to go along with that equipment. It's April. It's outside project time. I'm going to start working on some outside projects at the new house now uh, this month and excited about those. And Krebs Kubota can help you out with whatever that deal is uh, for uh, your your property. Maybe you've got a commercial property as well uh, that you need to have new equipment. If you need to rent equipment, for the weekend, they got you there as well. Big and small equipment for Krebs Kubota with the best customer service online at KrebsKubota.com. It is eSports. We are powered by BetMGM. We love BetMGM. You should love BetMGM too. Get up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet misses four new users with the bonus code ATOZ Sports. Sign up today. They're the king of the sports book. Go to your Apple or Android app store, type in BetMGM, and then use that bonus code ATOZ Sports. All one word, no spaces. They are the king of sports books. All right. So going back through it, which of these three teams is most likely to make the playoffs in 2024? The Titans, the Panthers, or the Falcons? Three of the top four spending teams in the NFL's offseason thus far. The Falcons, obviously, 180 million. Of that 240 is Kirk Cousins. <laughs> and then uh, the Panthers spending a bunch of money. I, I did find this comment really funny, Zach. Early, This was a really early in the show from Malachi said, the Panthers spent a lot of money and I have no idea who they got. And I live in Charlotte. <laughs> it's like, well, that just tells you a lot about the Carolina Panthers right now. And I was in Charlotte two weekends ago and I sold zero anything about the Carolina Panthers. Uh, you know, and I was in downtown right next to the city. Well, there's not much to root for right no. now. No, not much. Not much. All right. Not Who's- even Bryce Young's decision making on the field. Because I feel like if you watched him last year, look, he didn't have as much help as he truly needed. So we'll yeah. give him that. But he was right. making some bad decisions. All right. So who has the most uh, who has most likely to make the playoffs? The worst team in the NFL, the seventh worst team in the NFL or the eighth worst team in the NFL, because that's the Panthers, Titans, and Falcons in that order. Zach, I'll send you to the chat. Uh, Brian goes Falcons. Hello, lady. He goes Titans. You've got Ashley going Titans. Falcons from Duran. Falcons from John. NFC South. Worser. That's a new word. Than yeah, nice. uh, AFC South. 
Uh, Mark D goes Titans, Falcons from Big Ten Jeff. Got a big upgrade at quarterback at Kirk Cousins. All the Falcons' money is on Cousins, so not them from Eric. But, but they've got weapons there. And that was that's why they fired Arthur Smith is because he couldn't figure out how to use those weapons and win because they didn't have a quarterback. Did the Vikings – no, the Vikings missed the playoffs this year, but Kirk Cousins tore his Achilles, right? So, like yeah. – so and that Justin uh, Jefferson was hurt a lot of the year too. Yeah, but you look at Kirk Cousins when he has weapons, usually does make the playoffs. Like that is he a goes, recipe. He goes for four thousand yards. <laughs> that's a recipe for a playoff team. Um, yes, Willie says the Titans, Falcons from Darius because the division ain't that good. Dylon goes with the Falcons. Elo goes Titans. Steve goes Atlanta. Deborah goes Titans. You know, it's a two horse race between the Falcons and the Titans, but Falcons, Titans, Falcons, Titans, Falcons, Titans. This is back and forth. This is a heavyweight battle. I mean, even more Titans, Falcons, Titans, Falcons, Titans, Falcons. I'm just going one in a row. I mean, this is, I'm just going down the list. So I think this is pretty split. We really put the 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 chat to the test today, Austin, because we gave them both a question that they could easily just say, Titans, 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 I O, go two tone, two tone. And they didn't. That's the respect of the chat, right? Mm -hmm. I think that shows the intelligence of at times, look, they're gonna be one sided at times. We all know that, but I think that's a great example of sure. them being fair to the question. Yeah, so I, I want to flip this over to you though. Because you're the Falcons and the Panthers are in the division of your team, the, the Tampa Bay Bucks, who were the division champs last year. They were the four seed, right? Uh, won the playoff game against the Eagles, got really close in Detroit with Baker two for a second in the divisional round. So with the Bucks re-signing Baker, re-signing Mike Evans, they're resetting the offense and doing it again, running it back on the defensive pieces. They brought back some, let some go. How do you feel about the Falcons? pushing the Bucks, who should be the NFC South favorites right now. We talked about the easiest way to make the playoffs is win your division. It's not yeah. the only way to make the playoffs, right? That's right. It is one way. I, I picked the Falcons in this scenario because I am, and look, I'm an honest man too. I could easily sit there and said, you know, fire them cannons. The Bucks are going to go back to back. I don't trust them. I don't trust that division. There's a lot of unknowns. There's more knowns in the AFC South with high pick quarterbacks. I think I trust, and let's just go to the other three teams, Trevor Lawrence as a quarterback, CJ Stroud as a quarterback. The Colts combined, the Colts roster combined with maybe the possibility of what we know a little bit of Anthony Richardson as a quarterback compared to Baker Mayfield with a less the, the Bucks are worse this year than they were last year. They lost they re-signed guys but they lost pieces and they don't have a high draft pick cuz they made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The Panthers garbage. I, I don't even need to say anything else. Mm -hmm. The Saints they don't scare me. So I think the Falcons is Kind of the easier selection, and I think that's credited to the turnover of the AFC South that the NFC South has not turned over, honestly, in a very long time. Since Tom Brady was doing battle with Drew Brees, they really have not had that, like... Matt Ryan? Yeah, they, they haven't had... <clears throat> and, and the NFC South is notorious for this, though. Like there was a span of 15 years where they never had back-to-back -back division champs. Like there was a new team that won every single year. So I think the Falcons, the recipe says that Kirk Cousins, if healthy with good weapons, should win or should go to the playoffs, I should say. Yeah, it, it, because you got Bijan, you got Kyle Pitts, you got Drake London, you got some other good receivers there. Uh, you got Algier, the other running back, who's pretty solid too. Uh, it's just, you know, trying to put it all together with Kirk Cousins and he's coming off an Achilles and he's older. That's not the easiest thing either uh, with that injury. So I, I think the answer has to be the Falcons on this because of what you just laid out there. 
you know, the Titans, if they can be the third team in a row to follow the trend of hire new coach, take young quarterback, uh, spend a bunch of money and win the division because the favorite crumbles, then that would be phenomenal for everybody that's watching this show right now, including uh, our business. But I'm not going to bank on that to happen. Maybe I should have put my $5 bonus bet from BetMGM this morning on the Titans win the AFC South instead of DJ Burns and NC State. But, um, you know, I'll take the earlier payoff uh, on that one. So, uh, yeah, I think it's the Falcons on this, but the, the Panthers have no shot. No shot whatsoever. Um, I just, I am not a believer in Bryce Young at all. And I'm not a believer in what David Tepper is going to try to do uh, with their new head coach, Canales, too. So, um, I think we're aligned on that. Uh, one thing, because look, I, with the turnover of the off season, you you don't know everything. I did not know, and I'm trying to figure out who asked this. Oh, MB, who is the Falcons OC? So I don't. Do you know? I I no, I, no, I now no. know. I Absolutely know. not. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Raheem Morris is the head coach. So and tied to who Raheem their, Morris, who is their came o- from uh, L.A. Rams. So. Is it a Rams guy? Yeah, oh, Zach Robinson, he, who was uh, the quarterback's coach for L.A., came over with Raheem Morris. So good question from MB, so we can all get educated on uh, the Falcons' mm. uh, coordinator situation. But, yeah, you know, Kirk Cousins is the veteran that he, – he's Ryan Tannehill, and he's just trying to get over the Ryan Tannehill hump. What's going to happen with Ryan Tannehill? He hasn't signed anywhere either. No, nah. there's a lot of there's a lot of notable players out there that are just kind of waiting. I, I think this free agency was interesting because there was like the big rush early and then it died. It died faster than most free agencies. Part of why is because I think this is a good draft class. And this is a good draft class in the first 100 picks. And so I think teams would rather see who they can land in the first 100 picks, 90 picks of the draft, and then fill out with veterans afterwards where they missed the gap. That, which is why running back, we talked about this yesterday, running backs go early in free agency because probably not a lot of running backs, maybe a couple go in those first 90 to 100 picks. But I think that's, you know, it's it's fascinating to watch how the draft impacts free agency and vice versa. There's a lot of offensive linemen still available. There's a lot of wide receivers still available in free agency because those are the two best positions available in the draft. So go cheap and younger first and then fill your pieces with what you don't get that the draft doesn't fall your way. That's what every agent is telling their veteran wide receiver. Hang tight, man. Hang tight. Let's just see how the draft plays out. You don't want to go to OTAs anyway. And every agent is telling their veteran running back, it's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll be it for uh, the football talk of the show. But we've got shade to throw. We love throwing shade to wrap up every Tuesday show. So get that shade off your chest, throw it in the chat and we'll read the best shade here on the show. Let's get it going. Shout out to our great friends at Wilson County Hyundai. Make them a part of your new car buying process. See them in Lebanon or online uh, and our buddy Payne Bone there online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. You can save money uh, by going out there instead of buying that downtown vehicle at Wilson County Hyundai. So Zach shade in the chat, or you can start with your shade. You kind of gave a hint on your shade uh, with your women's college basketball shade, but I'm sure I see some good shade rolling in now in the chat. So we can go there. Yeah. If you want to get hit those, that shade, mine's going to be a little bit of a rant. I can just tell you, I'll let you, uh, Uh, and, and, and I've already seen a couple that, uh, I'll, here, I'll read some of the shade because I'll save and I okay. will go into my shade. Yeah, I don't want to scoop your seen. shade because I saw women's basketball shade in the chat. I didn't want to, you know, I'll do you like that. Big Ten Jeff, shade on Sam's fighting Illini for getting a 30-0 run put on them. That's embarrassing. That was a tough scene. 23-23, 53 <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, like, I felt bad for Illinois at parts of that. And then I'm just like, God dang, like... Uh, I, I want to express this real quick because you watched Iowa. I had Iowa State beating Illinois. That uh-huh. didn't happen. But Illinois was so much bigger and badder than Iowa State as a roster. And sure. then I was like, man, they're big. Like 
Then they played Yukon and they seemed tiny. And it was like big fish eat little fish, eat little fish, eat little fish, right? Like, so I, 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 I'm with you there. That 30 0 run was tough. Um, let's see here. Jason says, throwing shade at distracted drivers who occupy the front row at a stoplight. You have an obligation to pay attention on the front row. When the light mm. turns green and we're all just sitting there, it drives me insane. That's a good one. I don't think we've had that shade before. It, at least presented that way of it's your obligation as the front row driver to pay attention. Because everybody's uh, you, waiting on you. I like you, it. You've got your partner in crime, Andre, here for the shade on the refs for calling fouls on breathing on Zach Eady, but not for pushing him off all game. Uh, nah, look, so there's Edie. Throw, call more fouls on Zach Eady. The fouls you can call called. more foul, uh, uh, and I stand by what I said yesterday. You can call Damn. more fouls on him, just don't call him a victim. You okay. can call, you can call all, but just don't call him a victim. Uh, Vic, uh, we'll we'll talk about that here here shortly. Shade <laughs> on Diddy, uh, boom, right there. Uh, shade to the goofy kickoffs. Well, we haven't seen it yet, so I think hold I that. I think you're shade. gonna like it. I think you're gonna like it, Michael. Hold that shade. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jay, I, I'm not going to go with religious stuff. Uh, so we'll repeat <laughs> that up, but I did read it. Um, let's see here. Shade on Bucks Burner's beard for incorporating some grays at 33 years old. Guess it's that time. You get in your 30s, stress level goes higher. Those grays start to, to, to bear out. It's tough, Bucks Burner account. Um, let's see your shade for Purdue beating Tennessee shade goes on Zach Edie. Of course, I hope Purdue gets boat raced. Uh, there's more Edie shade. Let's see here. Uh, Bork Borkinson shade that I can't decide who I hate more is Edie or the LSU coach Kim Mulkey, who is something shade on myself says for Devin wearing gloves and cutting my thumb off while fixing my mower, Ooh, not my wearing gloves. Cutting your thumb off, like no more thumb, like or like cutting your thumb, or removing your thumb from the rest of your hand. How need more inform- did you cut your thumb off, Devin? Now I'm a little bit this concerned. This is something like, here. Is it just a tip? <laughs> is it knuckle? Is yeah. it? Is it? Are you? Are you is doing it the finger? Like this yeah, is it the the fingernail area? Be- at that knuckle, below the knuckle, or at the joint? Like we got to know more of this from Devin. I'll look. I'll look for Devin's response. Zach, you can keep leaving shit. All right. Here's here's my shade. Okay. He he, he just said uh, it's uh, just a tip. So, um. So the thumb is still there, but like I had a buddy that did this with his big toe. Um. And you remember that Zach? <laughs> that was uh, I do quite the ordeal <laughs> on that. He did it with his big toe, and uh, he no longer does yoga. All right. Here's my shade. And I saw this uh, in the comments and that spurred it, and I appreciate this. Let's just have a conversation about it. It is what it is. It's okay. Eric, uh, Eric Castillo, he, he had the same shade that I have. Eric says, shade on Angel Reese, you can't act like a villain, then play the victim when you lose. That's exactly what Angel Reese did. Angel Reese started crying after she got her ass beat by Iowa last night, says she doesn't really get to speak out on things, quote unquote, but took an opportunity to do so after losing to Iowa. Quote, I've been attacked so many times, death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've stood strong every single time. Okay. There is responsibility with power, right? And when you and Angel Reese, I also have criticism for her saying when I won a national championship last year, not we, she said that in her post-game press conference. Angel Reese was a great women's basketball player, and she will get drafted whenever she goes to the WNBA. But when you take a space in society that attracts attention, whether you TikTok dance whether you do shenanigans like this last year and you taunt players afterwards, I'm okay with talking trash. I think, but there's territory that comes with it. Being sexualized 
after you openly went on SI Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition? Like, I don't think anybody should, uh, you know, feel any of the heat that the internet brings to it. Doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, right? So, like, understand, ain't no fun when the rabbits got the gun. And that's exactly what Angel Reese is experiencing. She was on top of the mountaintop, winning a national championship, being at the forefront of women's basketball, and she earned all of that. But with power comes great responsibility, and the internet's not nice. But when you play in the sandbox, and the internet is our sandbox in today's society, you have to expect these things. So you can't cry home to mama and say you don't have a voice when things don't go your way and you don't win. Losing is a part of life, whether it's basketball, whether it is whatever, whether it's getting fired, whether it is a family dynamic, it doesn't matter. But you can't sit here and cry and say you don't really get to speak out on things. I call complete and utter BS. Like, I don't wish that you have death threats. Nobody should have death threats uh, upon them. I think that's nasty. But there are bad trolls in this world. And you have to understand the territory that you maintain. And there are positives and there are negatives, right? You've been afforded a ton of opportunity by being at the, the face of women's basketball and being a national champion. Don't go crying after you lose. And I felt like that was the energy, right? Stand on business. Well, stand on business when you win and stand on business when you lose. It does not matter. So I think um, Demetrius says uh, in this comment, everything Reese said was true, but from a competitive standpoint, no one wants to hear it, especially after what happened last season. And I think that's where it's it's tough because it's the time and place, I think is what you're throwing shade at, right? It's It's the... You lose on the national spotlight to Caitlin Clark in Iowa, and that's your first. And look, I I didn't watch the press conference. I don't know what the question was, if there was a question that opened that up for that answer, because I think it's important to know with all press conferences, when we're looking at the answers, what was the question that led them to that comment? I think that has to be fair. And so I look. All, the death threats, being sexualized, uh, being trolled, all these type of things, it sucks. And it unfortunately, it's uncontrollable because there are so many crazy people in the world on the internet that have no consequences or feel like they have no consequences. And you don't wish that upon anybody. And I think it's just something that you kind of have to, and it's hard because these are young 20-year-old people or late teens. They're going into adulthood. They're on a massive stage and they have an opportunity to set themselves up for life with chances, but there's a lot of bad that can come with that. And are you mature enough to deal with the, the bad things? And the more often than not, no, I mean, like I, I turned 34 next week. I don't know how I would handle <laughs> the type of hate that Angel Reese or somebody else would be getting at that stage. And so it's just like a, you know, I, I, I feel it's, it's hard because of their college athletes that are, now making millions of dollars at times. And so now it's even harder for us to discern. Like there used to be the whole, Hey, they're college athletes or kids. They're not getting paid. Don't criticize the, the kid, right? It, the, the lines have completely blurred and obviously dumbasses and trolls on the internet will habitually overstep that line. But you have to learn and you're right. Adolescence and maturity and growing up, but if you bring this type of energy, right? That's not how you can't feel good all the time. And that's a learning lesson. But now she's gotten, she lost, right? And it's a game. That's all it is, right? But you can't sit here and cry and and beg for pity per se after you brought that type of energy. And I think that's a learning lesson. And you're right. I'm a man, I'm 40, doesn't apply anymore. Because We can go after the kids. We as a society, because we as a society are paying the kids. Is the system right? No, I think it's dead wrong. I think the concept is right that we should pay them for their practices, but it's not set up correct because we're in this state of disarray of like what should college sports represent as far as pay for play? We don't know that yet. 
And unfortunately, you know, here's the catch 22. In six years, I bet you there will be a stipend and you won't be able to make as much money as you do now. Now you can make as much money as you want, but you get the criticism that goes along with it. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that's going to go because the uh, whole no, name- no one does, but you yeah, can't that's- cry. You can't cry. Okay. And look, I, you, you can cry. I'm not saying it's bad to cry, but you can't cry at the same time when you're at the bottom of the mountain and do this when you're at the top of the mountain. That's not how it works. And that's my shade. In, and I think she'll hopefully she'll learn a lesson. That's the shade is learn a lesson growing up as bring the same energy and take it on the chin when you lose. That's my yeah. shade. Uh, look, I, I'm just glad that a couple people got my uh, Dave Chappelle line uh, that I dropped there <laughs> with the habitual line stepper. Shout out to Titans Kyle and uh, Danny Whitson uh, there. My shade, Zach. I'm going to throw shade where shade needs to be thrown at whoever the hell was in charge of drawing the lines and setting up the court in Portland for the women's basketball tournament that had different distances for the three point lines and they didn't catch it. And again, like, I think it's, it's just like, how, how does this happen? Like how is one three point line shorter than what it's supposed to be? Like I, it, I, I don't even know how to throw shade on it any further because it's such a common sense thing of how does this continue to happen? And then how did nobody catch it where the coaches and players were like, screw it. We'll just play anyway. And I don't know if you, did you see the stats uh, of what the team, how the team shot on each side? No, I didn't see that. So, uh, so there was one, one side of the court in Portland had the, uh, regular three-point line yeah yeah no, the I other side sense, but what were the percentages the other side was shorter it wasn't like it was longer it was shorter than regulation regulation teams shot 33 percent from three point at that side the shorter one they shot 29 percent which is you i think you it, know it's, what it's, a three feels like and you muscle, muscle memory. memory and you're yep. planking it off the back of the rim like, like, I just like, how does this happen in Orlando? They get lasted the whole weekend. Coach was like, screw it. We'll play whatever. It's almost like when you're playing outside and you're playing a pickup game and you're like, well, the wind's blowing this way. So we need to like flip it. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, this half or this game, you guys get the win next game. Regardless, we'll flip it. And you guys get the win to make it come out e- even it. It's like, why are you doing this? Uh, it just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. That, that was happened. that was a bad look, and there is shade on the person for doing that because if that would have happened in like the NBA finals or in the men's game, it the story would have been so much bigger. I, they wouldn't have played. Like, and I, I don't think that they would have played. I because I think that it goes they would back delayed to delayed it to fix it and all that. Yeah. Right. And look, I, I that's just my opinion. I I don't know if that would have happened, but like I, I, like I don't get it. Like, how does that happen? Because I don't know. Like, did you see the difference? It wasn't even close. No. (laughs) And like, I don't know if I've told you, like when I was uh, in high school, me and a buddy had uh, a little mini business where we started, we went to people's houses, our friends' houses and say, Hey, do you want us to draw the paint in the three point line in your driveway? And we did that. They paid us like 75 bucks a driveway. And and so it was great. It was great. We were like ninth freshman, like parents had to drop us off and we got out there with our, with our string and our chalk and you do it, you, you get the, the center of the diameter of the rim and you put it down there. That's your point. And you have the string that goes out the three point line. You draw it all the way around and then you get your different spots of measurement. And you connect tape with dots. You, you go duct tape, you peel the center duct tape out, you spray it in there. Boom, done. Like that. So like, how do you mess this up? Somehow, some way. <laughs> they I don't brought- get it. Yeah, I, I don't know the 14 year old Austin like and Sean court, were either. able to do this thing, and we're at, we make a few hundred bucks off of that. It's not a bad little side job. So, uh, you got kids out there that want some side gig, and it's a pretty good job. So, hey, um, yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't get how that happens, but all right, that'll do it for us. Legerius Sneed press conference is coming up in two hours, 11 30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, that can also uh, be heard on 104.5 The Zone. Our guy Buck Rising will carry that press conference live on 104.5. And Buck will have Legereus Sneed sit down with him in person 
in the noon hour right after that press conference, just like Buck had with Calvin Ridley last month. So hear from Legereus Sneed, new Titans cornerback, uh, for the first time. And then Buck will be able to talk about how that interview went. Uh, what Buck did with Calvin Ridley was great last time. We'll be able to get a little bit more personality out of Sneed in a one-on-one interview rather than that press conference setting. So keep an eye out for that later on today. Sam will be there. who will have coverage of that press conference all across our social media. So keep it pinned there. And also a reaction at a to z sports.com slash Nashville for articles written about Legere Sneed and our socials. But make sure you hit the like button on the way out the door today. Like the show before you go. Uh, that goes a long way with us. So please hit that like button uh, on the show uh, before you head out here on Facebook and on YouTube. And we will catch you guys tomorrow morning on a Wednesday reacting to everything Legereus need. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Talk to you later. Adios.